24 February Friday, alright, MAO with Cal. Guys, this video is going to be mind-bending, mind-blowing, incredible information. You really need to watch all the way to the end because the video content has three to four areas and it will be very critical, especially if you are into long-term investment, all right? Because I personally feel that the crude oil can see $96 per barrel and likelihood this may happen between August to September period, okay? This is now only February, right? So I believe that there will be some building up very soon and I think that this will likely be happening. And of course, back then, about a couple years ago, I was predicting the crude oil from $65 and I expected it to go to 121 and I was perfect on this call. So I believe that this call now will be happening once again. And of course, if the crude oil price goes up, where will be the next black swan location? Now, I probably has found the place and I'm going to tell you why is it happening and why could it happen. All right. I do believe right now from the map is of the flag actually behind me. You can see the answer. All right. So stay tuned and let's go. Now, once again, thank you, Ames, for the kind sponsorship. And of course, guys, disclaimer apply as usual. Please make sure you do that. Okay. Now, before we go into the market stuff, let's go look at this in a local scene, all right? Now, have you watched, have you, you saw this yesterday? We saw the crescent moon, the Jupiter and Venus seem to be in alignment over Singapore. It's a very beautiful sight. Now, I saw this on, on Facebook and I see that, wow, pretty cool. But my place, I can't see it. But then again, you can see that you can give you a clearer shot of this. Looks beautiful, right? Now, which one is the sun, <laughs> the, the moon? Of course, it's this one here. Then where's Jupiter, right? And where's Venus? Okay, don't worry. Let me tell you. Here we go. So this is the moon. This is Jupiter and this is Venus. All right, so why I bring this in? Uh, well, apparently in the olden time when you have planets actually alignment and stuff, right? It's a good, it's like a very beautiful scene, but also it actually uh, coincides with something negative, which means that you can see a uh, problem happen to the country or <laughs> things like that. So when I look at this, it's not right, straight away comes to me is this one here. Apparently, right, recently Google has just, uh, uh, what do you call, um, sack a few people, all right, lay off a few people, the nicer word, and about 190 of them were laid off. And of course, the thing was, it came in via email and it was at the night, so this wasn't a very nice scene. And of course, it's caused a bit of upheaval in Singapore. But if you look at it across the board right now, you can see happening in Ireland, and of course, uh, Ericsson cuts 1004, and of course, McKinsey also 2000. So it's happening globally. And today, I'll talk a lot on this unemployment, and I can tell you this by August. 2023, this will actually happen. And of course, it's not just a date that I just out of nowhere. I have uh, have many, many sources and one of them today I'll share with you and that is pure statistics, all right? So think about this itself, right? Now for me, I am not a YouTuber. I don't really put myself into the pay list. It means that YouTube don't pay me. Um, why? Because I like to share things around. And of course, I study a lot of YouTubers, the way they, they do their materials. So I don't think it's fair that if I take their material and put it on mine, all right? But the thing is this, I like to really share what they say. And of course, you can actually do a lot of Google on them and go and join them and listen to them. Okay, now for me itself, like I basically has been pretty hardworking every day. I spend about four hours or five hours compiling the data for you. Like I am very precise. I tell you that, right? Low slightly, the fat fund rate will see 6%, while many are looking at 525 and I even give a date on that and I explain it in my video. I also tell you that, you know, why S&P 500 may be going down to 3,800 and of course, I also back it up from Mike Wilson sharing uh, and Michael Harnett too. And of course, at the same time, I'm also pretty, pretty confident that FTSE DAX will see some selling and of course, DAX, I'll tell you more in detail. And I cannot be only one-sided, right? If someone say he had a bullish call and I think he do make some sense, I also bring in like what happened to Tom Lee uh, from Fun Strat. And of course, I was very, 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 very clear on the 8th of February that I said that it's time to short the market and because I said that more rate hikes is coming in. So basically from the 8th of February, I have been very, very bearish in the market. I mean, a long time since last year, but this time around even more bearish because I'm pretty confident that we'll see that. And of course on the 8th of February, the Dow Jones was trading at 34,000. And I think in a video, I was telling you guys that I expect a 1,000 to 1,500 points movement, right? Remember that? Yes, if you remember that, leave the comment and let everybody hear it out because I really want you to do that because this is our confident level that I have for myself. And incredibly, I also mentioned that recently the Dow Jones will come down and it will hit my Fibonacci number. And amazingly, last night, the Dow hit 32,800, no more, no less, and rebounded 300 points. 
Wow, that was amazing. And of course, the we profit. Well, I have a group called Al Cal. I'll follow you. It's a Telegram, and people pay me money for this. And you can see how it is. I give them calls. I tell them what to do. I give them the stop loss. I give them the profit level, and you can see amazingly we are locking pretty pretty good profit. Like this particular Dow Jones short, we had it right at thirty four thousand two hundred. Yeah, this is where we call for short, and the market just came down all the way. I think fourteen Feb was here. Yeah, this is where we call for short, and of course the market really come down to the level that we mentioned. So guys, if you like to join this, I'll follow you, contact us through Facebook, we'll get more information for you. But because this group is going to close in uh, March, in March, so we have a new one coming in. So if you are very interested in that itself, right, let us know, okay? All right, okay, so this is actually tell you more about myself. Let's go back to the charts, okay? So the thing is this, we have more than a thousand, we, sorry, we have about 800 subscribers right now. My target is 1,000 subscribers. And as I say again, I'm not part of YouTube in a way, so I don't get any, uh, payback or payout from YouTube but to me itself like, it's just a personal target so if you can help me to hit my 1000 subscriber I will shower out some great gifts to whoever um, come and watch a particular video on that day so when we hit that 1000 subscriber okay so do me a favor share and let everybody come in and of course keep your comment coming in we will do the um, Cal uh, but lunch with Cal thingy tomorrow all right spin the wheel lunch with Cal all right thank you for all the great great comments guy really really appreciate that and of course again you can put in whatever you want me to share but if I can do it I'll do it like this guy he want me to put more for neutral gas but I don't have the data for that so I apologize on that okay so guys keep loading in your comment I thank you for that and of course please help me to hit my 1000 subscriber okay all right now let's us do this <laughs> as usual subscribe and move on okay all right let's just go to the market right now thank you all right first of all let's recap what happened last night the Dow Jones recovered from the low end recovered all the way and up by 100 point Nasdaq also did the same thing and S&P 500 up by 21 point now look at it Apple didn't move up much yesterday Microsoft was up by 1.3 percent Amazon was not moving so basically itself, right, the whole market went up on its own because it was some buying from the support level. And of course, take note, Berkshire Hathaway will, will have their announcement on their earnings. And who knows, who knows? Warren may say something to tell him, okay, who will take over him? Because at this moment right now, he's already a 96 year old. What do you expect, right? Is it 93, 96? I think within these two numbers, but definitely old enough. So guys, watch out for this, okay, tomorrow, yep. And of course, let's see what Berkshire have in their portfolio. So the Dow Jones basically has S&P 500 closing higher. It snapped a four-day losing streak. It's expected. I told you yesterday, the market most likely rebound. And again, the focal point was all about the inflation current and of course, the interest rate factor. So it's nothing too much uh, into different things, but basically right now the market is just saying that, okay, we do have slow growth, we have moderating inflation, so does it necessary to really have interest rate all the way up? Well, my answer is definitely. You really need to really quickly, quickly hit interest rate hard to the market, let the stock market fall, let everybody get out of the asset market, and then after that itself, right, inflation will come off by its own. And when that all happened, unemployment will shoot to the sky, which is undeniable. And then when all this happened, the repercussion will bring down inflation lower. And when that all happened itself, right, that everything just restart. So of course, you look at the stock market right now, if the market continue to do this right way, by selling first and pumping up later, this is not gonna help. Now, of course, some people say this is bullish. That's why the market is rebounding every time it goes down. Uh, well, you are right on one case on this, but in the other side, I felt that there's a lot of loading off by the boys and those will be buying itself, right? And probably uh, those people who think that the market is gonna be good, or positive but let's just be upfront here statistics the numbers probability are all against these people all right so i'll tell you more in detail so to look at this right this is the trim mean C pce inflation rate all right and you can see versus the fed fund effective rate so you can see very very clearly that whenever the fed fund rate growth rises up itself right you notice that the pce inflation rate will either be slowed down or it will be coming off this is proven with stats. When you have all this proven itself, statistically, this will happen. So now the thing is this, we all know that the participant in the Federal Reserve agrees that the restrictive monetary policy was required until the Fed really see inflation coming down to 2%. So the question is this, if they are really, really, they agree, why don't just let it go and push it up? But of course, again, everybody agrees, but they are not very what you call there are some most of them in fact are not very keen to raise interest rate too fast and 
if you do that, you drag the feet, who suffer? I can tell you this, definitely not these people. Uh, the people on, on the street or all the household, they will suffer. And of course, if that's the case itself, we look at the numbers, you can see very clearly. Last night, the GDP number has dropped to 2.7%. Now, it's still not negative yet. So that means that the market, we haven't seen recession. So no need to panic, right? No. This tells you that the numbers is coming off and it's a matter of time, this number will go to negative. And when that all happens itself, that will be in April. And of course in April, if we continue for a few more months, by July, we will actually see the second time negative numbers. And of course in August, that is where officially we will ring the bell because that will be the start of recession, okay? So that is how I get my August, okay? That's not the end yet. And you can look at this right now. The jobless claim is ridiculous. It's expected to be 200,000 and yet it come out 192. So which means that the market is still pretty okay. The employment data shows that the economy is okay. So wait a minute, the earnings are coming down, but yet the employment is strong. Why? Because a, the, a lot of companies are still holding, keeping people. But realize that if, they, if, they, if this continue for a few more months, when earnings continue to deteriorate and interest rate costs keep on going higher, definitely they'll cut more people, all right? And when this all happens, this is not gonna be fun. So tonight, 9.30 p.m., watch out for the PCE data. The numbers is looking to be higher, okay? This is very important. If the number come out 0.5%, oh gosh, the market will shake again, all right? So watch out for this. Now, while all this is going on itself, right, you can see about crude oil inventories is going up. So is it because that the various inventory going up itself is trying to curb inflation? Well, of course, if crude oil price goes slow or go down lower, definitely it will aid inflation to reduce it. But to me itself, right, I just got this very nagging feeling that I think crude oil bear market is about to end soon. I mean, that means that, right, in my opinion, I believe that the bear is going to end soon for crude oil. I believe that crude oil price is going to go higher. Now, why do I say so? First of all, Goldman Sachs on my side, okay? Now, Goldman Sachs have been very, very vocal. They are very confident that the crude oil price will go to $100. Now, of course, JP Morgan's side says that it will not go. So let's see who will win, two big boys. But I tell you this, guys. If you ask me right now, the current situation now between China, US, Russia, Ukraine, all these things tells me that just, just one trigger happy. It will really light up the tire crude oil and of course when that happened inflation will be the biggest concern all right so to me itself right that's very good reason why i believe that crude oil will go to a hundred dollars so let me share with you right now in fact my target is 96 dollars yeah i'll tell you more in detail let's watch this video from this guy once again and see what he has to say regarding crude oil okay let's go prediction that we could see hundred dollar barrel of oil so our base case is that next year we will see uh, higher prices, uh, back 85, with upside risk if Iran doesn't happen. But really the core of that view is that eventually high prices get supply to respond. And I think when we take stock so far of that supply response, it's been slow. So it does create risk that we need actually more and even higher prices to balance the market in 2022 and 2023. I think that's the key. 21 was the vaccine-led recovery in demand. 22, 23 is a real structural bull market where supply is being tested to respond finally. All right, that second. So All right, some of you may find, hey, Kel, you showed this video before, right? Yeah, I showed this before. But if you want to take notice of this, right? Um, here we go. I'm going to bring it to here. You remember this? The crude oil back then was $70. Now it is $77, up by 10% already. So I'm trying to bring back to you that if these guys are genuinely serious with their call, usually it will have to follow with the price action. So that's the reason why I bring it back to you, right? So it, it actually showing it. And of course, he put his reason. It's a possibility as company ramp up production and cost goes up. That is definitely for sure. And the supply is so well with the current Russia thingy. Maybe the supply may not be able to meet. And of course, with the Saudi side, OPEC is trying to reduce production. So that will again will push up the demand or the price up. And of course, would that be strong record now demand? Well, of course, if you compare to what happened during the, the, the so-called pandemic period so definitely now if the economy is recovering or opening up the demand will be there there's a lot of flying around from tourists here and there yes indeed but of course well, is, are they spending that's another question all right so at least that is my reason why i believe that crude oil price will be moving higher and of course if you look at the chart right now you can see very very clear um stuff right now you can see that crude oil every month has been coming down see every month 
the most of it is still coming down. Yeah. So of course, that's why inflation is you know coming off. But you look carefully right now, right? We are actually holding up, and I don't like this price action because that means that it's just a matter of time. Crude oil will break the important resistance at seventy-seven dollars and fifty-five cents based on Fibonacci. Okay, and you can see that right. Once it breaks above seven fifty. It will go to the moving average MA 250, and that will be approximately 85 to 86 dollars. And of course, if that actually breaks, gosh, 96 dollars will be next. All right, guys. So that's the reason why I felt that crude oil can go to 96 dollars. And of course, Biden doesn't want it because he has been putting a lot of crude oil into the market. But you can see that although the crude oil have came down, if you look back again. The crude oil price that came down from $96 back in August last year is bringing down all the way. But now it's just a matter of time that it can go all the way up again. So this is actually not a very good sign. And of course, in my opinion, this will get very dangerous. So of course, if you're a cartoon for the thing itself, we all know that US are trying to ban Russia on, on oil import, but you know that Europe side is not very keen because that means more, more expensive stuff. And of course, with OPEC and uh, this uh, Putin fighting over crude oil, I think that this is going to get very interesting. Okay, so my, my target is $96 per barrel. All right. Now, if that happened, what will happen to the housing? How about the household itself? Oh, that, this is bad. Apparently, the household debt now has skyrocketed to the highest level since 2008 financial crisis. Now, on average, our whole they owe about 142,000 US dollar by end of 2022. This is really incredible stuff. And because of that, right, they have to really start to borrow from credit cards. But when credit card comes in, it's interest bearing. So which means that now people are actually having more costs on their side. And of course, now the credit card APRs are now at the record high level, guys. This is no joke at all. And the source from Yahoo Finance. So this is telling you guys, if people think about this, if you imagine you're, you lose your job and then you have credit card crisis and your interest is going up at the same time, oh my goodness, this is not going to be good. So now you can see the credit delinquencies are moving up. And that's something that I've been telling you guys, this is not a good sign at all. And of course, if this continue and with jobless claims still at the low end, once this turn around, things will get very, very nasty. And of course, right now, right, you can see the outstanding subprime auto debt is now much higher in the 30 days delinquency is rushing up, guys. Why I mean people who bought the, the cars are not able to facilitate their, their prepayment. And if this continue, what will happen to those companies, right? Think about this. And of course, right now, you can see again, this is the same uh, article and tell you that that's why the numbers are really, very high right now. But the thing is this, the unemployment numbers are still very low. It's still at 3.4%. Yes, indeed, as of January 2023. And that's only like 5.7 million people out of the 500, uh, 300 million people in America. So what is happening right now? Well, guys, it's because things haven't really exploded yet, okay? Because now the thing is this, more and more Americans are turning to credit for because of the current rising of prices. So if that is the case as well, right, if this is at the high end and this is at the low end, that means that right, once the company realizes that they cannot continue, they will start to cut further. And that is where the unemployment rate will shoot up. And think about this, if they are being cut away and they borrow a lot of money, so what will happen? I cannot imagine, guys. So you can see right now the latest uh, credit card debt has hit nearly $1 trillion, and that is 17 February 2023. Uh, guys, all these are uh, real stuff from uh, respected uh, financial website, so it's not like created it myself, okay? And the thing is this, just last few months, you take a look, just last three months, right, okay? Credit card first, uh, user has carried about better than 5,800 US dollar. That is really, really cra crazy, guys. That means about one card. And of course, if this continue with interest rate rising up, my goodness, that means the cost will keep on climbing. And what will do? If they cannot pay anymore, they either sell their home or they may even consider just delinquent themselves. And this is not going to help for economy. So now we understand why itself T roll price, okay? They are all very, very serious. They believe that this is not good. It's just a matter of time. The boss, the labor, labor market, although it's resilient, is not going to hold. And that's a reason for that. Let me what, let, let you hear this guy. I think it's pretty good. It's a bit of a long four minutes video, but I think you should really hear what he has to say. Let's go. See you. I mean, it's obviously so easy to be bearish. All you have to do is tune into any you know program, and most people who come on lay out the negative case because it's easy to make. But why are you? 
Yeah, the bearish narrative is easy to make. And I'm going to start by saying I'm not an uber bear, but I do think that it makes sense right now to be underweight stocks. I mean, just think of the bearish narrative. And you just had a guess kind of go through it. The yield curve is inverted 80 basis points. PMIs are dropping like a rock. Manufacturing down 16 points. Services down 20 points, even though they've jumped back up. Inflation is sticky. You had a guest talk about the equity risk premium. It's as compressed as it's been since the great financial crisis. Earnings expectations look high at three and a half percent. Our models predict that housing could go down seven to 10 percent this year and on and on. The leading indicators are flashing red. You know, we've had a few good prints, retail sales and employment and so on. But really, the bearish truck is coming, Scott. I know, but there's no indication that the bearish truck is going to, you know, smack into the wall. If you, you know, look, Jamie Dimon has been, you know, notable for being out there with some, you know, pretty bleak calls when he talked about there being a hurricane. And I know that you know exactly what I'm referencing. And he was on the network today and he could have doubled down on that. And frankly, he, he did not. He still maintains there's a chance for a soft landing. Bullard, economy stronger than we thought. Markets overpriced a recession in 2023. Have we just gotten too uber negative given how strong the economy, at least at this moment, still appears to be? I think so, Scott. And I, I, I heard Jamie Dimon and he was more nuanced today. And one of the reasons why this uber bearish set of data uh, has to be interpreted a little bit differently is that we still have about two trillion of accumulated savings. Now the bears will all say, and again, I'm one of them, I'm just a more nuanced bear. They're all say, well, we're drawing down on these savings, but two trillions mm -hmm. of accumulated savings going into a recession is a very unusual, never seen before situation. And you had Stephanie earlier talk about the consumer and the strength of the consumer, 3%, you know, retail sales in January, that's pretty good. The employment market is just really strong. And yes, everybody will say, the bears will say, look, it's just a lag defect. And I agree with it. You have to wait it out. You've had 475 basis points of hikes. Let's see, let's let time pass to see how this is going to unfold. There is a lag mm -hmm. defect and not, and you know, and I totally agree with him. That is a lag effect and it's going to come in very soon. All right. And I may explain to you now in numbers why I say there's a lag effect, but it will come. Let me show you this, guys. Now, this one game of trade. So I want a YouTuber in the world. It's pretty good stuff. Now, take a look at this one. This is really impressive. And this came from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. OK, now take a look. Then whenever there's inversion of the year, right, which we saw a very clear one in August 2022, this is based on the number of months it will take okay for things to really happen and you can see it uh, very interestingly um once as inversion right the unemployment rate itself will actually goes down a bit okay and that will be between this period of time okay that means four months to ten months due after the first inversion and very interesting that once about one year one year okay one year they will see unemployment going up and this is crazy guys because we saw it in august last year the inversion and now if you look at statistic one year later you will actually see interest rate going up and that is, i mean sorry you will see the unemployment going up and that is what i've been saying guys one year august 2023 and this is no joke guys this is really incredible data and i can tell you this this is getting very very scary and of course look at it now when the deeper the inversion is the weaker the pmi data and pmi data is very important because it's the ism manufacturing stuff and you can see that the lower the so-called the in the the, in the deeper the inversion okay the weaker the pmi okay and of course if it's with weaker pmi you can see from the past history and numbers when the inversion are really at the low end all right you can see the stock market really really sell 
and it's going to be pretty bad so where are we right now we are also near this point here and of course if this get any closer to the top inversion guys things will get very scary so to me it's all right there's still a lot of room to go for the s b 500 now mike wilson is saying at 3000 okay and of course we have uh this michael hunter at 3800 minimum now for me itself i will say that i look at 3650 that is my number okay now this is my number i'm gonna put it there with my name there and of course um, if this all happened itself right then if you are involved in it then good guys can make good money from there so the lei now the leading economics indicators are really nose diving this is no joke at all guys look at the numbers it's really coming off very badly the gdp numbers is coming down right it's still not negative yet because we haven't seen recession but based on what we see when the leis are coming down is it's just a matter of time the real gdp will follow so that's the reason why i tell you this by april right by april itself we will definitely see the negative GDP and that is why I'm very concerned on this and of course the numbers are all displaying on their own and now you can see the spread between the leading and the coincidental uh, economic indicators are rushing up right now okay it's rushing up and usually when that all happen you can expect that the unemployment data will follow through so all these statistics you don't see in anywhere because I actually read up a lot watch a lot of video and I compile it for you guys I really want you guys to tell your friends that this guy is crazy this guy is good let them join me and subscribe all right to my video and let's all make money together shall we and of course you can see this is the most recent that whenever the unemployment data start to bottom out look at look whenever the unemployment bottom out right you can see once the unemployment data start to bottom out the stock market will really 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 fall so guys this one this happened back in the pandemic period so not too sure how, how precise but in 07 zero zero we saw it so guys where are we right now we're at the low end still we haven't even seen that yet that means that there's still a lot of room for the market to fall guys there's still a lot of room and if you look at the chart wise why is not possible because every time the market try to recover the low of each cycle gets lower so which means that that means there's a lot of room for the market to go lower and that's why federal reserve says that well the stock market is still kind of like you know at the overvalued point so that means that there is still more downside and of course where will be the next location for the make black swan in my opinion it will be in germany now why germany because in germany inflation is a really incredible area right now look at it it's still maintaining above the eight percent mark for the long long time although it have came off from the high but it has just come up again that means that the inflation number has just came up again this is not a good sign that means that if from 8.1 jump by 8.7 and this can go back again to 10 percent especially if i tell you this if a crude oil price goes to 96 dollars per barrel this will go through the roof and of course when that happened the bank will have to come in again to hike interest rates and when that all happened the stock market will not be able to hold because we all know that in germany right now other than funds are pumping in this is a very clear cut of like everybody rushing in and to get the last piece of it before they all run out guys this is going to be very crazy for germany and you can see right now even their own deutsche bank okay predicts a stock market sell off of 25 percent okay now do note this this one an article on 11 december last year and it was in these guys are all the top top guys right so their reason was because of Federal reserve ecb or rate hiking and blah 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 right if you look at the chart take a look guys look, the chart doesn't show you at all this is when they came in and tell the whole world that there will be a 25 percent sell off right but look at the market he came off about four to five percent supported huge volume came in and the stock market go to new high level <laughs> right guys so tell me this is uh, this is going to like you know this is going to be good now but the thing is this i'm going to be up front here now look at this number here this is my 78.6 right and that number itself is about 15,000 um can't really see my screen i apologize on that oh gosh this is bad okay never mind it's about 500 plus okay sorry i can't see it's a bit blur here but my my view is simple okay all right it should be five because this is a four so it should be lower number that means it just should be at fifteen thousand 
uh, maybe 400, okay? Okay, sorry, my bad. Now, my point is this. The market has been holding up for a few days already. In fact, about three weeks. And the thing is this. The movement now on the RSI feels that there could be, there could be a sell-off very nearby. So if you ask me, right, once there's any inclination of the inflation numbers going up again, and if the numbers continue to go higher, I believe that German DAX will fall. And it will come off pretty fast. 14,600 will be the first level. But you ask me, right, this one can go down all the way, if you ask me, all the way to this point here. And that will be around 13,800, okay? So if you ask me where's the next potential sell-off, I think that this... Okay, Germany DAX will be one of them and I think that I will be correct in the time to come. All right, guys, this is very important video. You really need to send to your friends. Let them watch it because now the current situation in Germany is really not good at all. And the thing is this, a lot of people know that we're going to hit recession soon, but the market is buying and that is really very insane buying. And this is a matter of time. Things can go all the way wrong. Okay, I'll see you on the video side for the technical side. This is Cal signing off.